Give it two. Give it three. Cover me up. I have a one question to ask. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Ah. War time. War time. You gonna make your name today? You understand? Yes, sir. One clock. Two clock. How you feel? How you feel? Yeah! I'm Jenna, this is Alex. Welcome to this week's edition of Born to Compete. Alex, championships continue around town. Yeah, man. We're at Sutton Middle School for the APS Championship. The uh -huh. ladies are joining us. Their guys are about to play here in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's start with a preview of that game for me. All right, talking about the boys game. You're looking at Harper Archer. They have a very good point guard, number four, and then obviously down low, we call him real, real is Boo Man George. He plays very well down there. But then we look over at Young Middle School, Young Wolves, and ladies right here, y'all young? Yeah! As you see, Young Wolves, the cheerleaders are here, but they play as a team. Now they have a young point guard, Ant-Man, that's his nickname. Okay. They know Ant-Man, oh, okay, all right. Ant-Man can play the point, He's, he is very good, and he has a chance to lead this team to a championship as a seventh grader. Okay, the girls were earlier, and this one was a heartbreaker. We had nine and one Cobras coming in against six and four CSK. Yeah. CSK pulled this one out, but let's let's not give it away. I just gave it away. However, let's, let's preview it a little bit. Uh -huh. Tell me about this game. Well, CSK, look, they're six and four. Their coach over there knows what she's doing. She has them playing as a team right now. There's no individual players. Right. But if you're looking at the individual players, look on King's side. Number one, she is a monster on both sides of the court. It is going to be, I guess we just gave it away a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see, obviously, in these highlights coming up, how she can go as she's kind of a one-person team, right. take on that team that's complete with CSK. Right, so let's take a look at those highlights right now. The APS Girls Championship featured the 9-1 King Lady Cobras. Right there you see their point guard, Tamara White, banks in the deep three. They were taking on the 6-4 CSK Lady Eagles. Here White drives and drops it in for two. As you see, the APS Player of the Year, she was named later on that night. She, she is leading her team in a way that no one can in the city as she's trying to lead them to a championship game. See the steal, she knocks the layup down, and right now she has her team in a position to win it. CSK Lady Eagles fighting back in this one. Nice passing there for the easy layup on the other end. And this time, White's going to do a little showboating. Going to give you the spin move. Got the crowd going, and she drops it in for another layup. Again, she is the APS Player of the Year for a reason. Lady Eagles pushing the ball ahead here. Goodman, number 10, going to pull up. Nothing but net there on the jumper. And then off the inbounds here, watch number 25 down low in the paint. McCoy seals her defender. Easy layup there. Look here, the APS player of the year. She's been named that for a reason. You see, she gets the rebound, steps back outside three-point line, knocks down the three-pointer. Right here, Lady Eagles again going right to the rack. Doesn't go, but watch Jackson fighting hard for the offensive rebound. Back up and in for two. The Lady Eagles continue their comeback. You see Goodman knock it off the backboard there. I think she yelled bank out there, Jenna. I think you also said something about Tim Duncan as well. Yeah, we're going to call her the big female fundamental. All right, Fort's in there, number 30, hits it ahead to Goodman, number 10, two plus one. That completes their comeback, ties the game at 24 all in the fourth quarter. And then you see here, Goodman again goes with the shot. Kawana goes up and gets the offensive rebound, knocks it off the glass as they add on to their lead. All right, but we haven't heard from her here recently, but here she is, White again with the steal, less than a minute to go, takes it coast to coast, and the ball game is tied once again. In the very next play, White notices the ball right there, goes for the steal. One of her teammates picks it up, gives it to White. White has the open three, but good defense by Lady Eagles. And number 30 takes the shot, and she misses it. Doesn't drop there. CSK Lady Eagles with a chance, and who else but Goodman cherry picking on the other end, number 10 gets the two and this is how the game ends csk steals the ball and they can celebrate as they are the aps champions for this year 2014. congratulations to the lady eagles and they are pumped and you see forcing there winning the mvp and them being presented with the with the championship trophy congratulations to those girls it was a good game we started off with a slow season but i told the girls it's all about perseverance <laughs> And my saying is, the race is not given to the swift and about to strong, but to the ones who endure it to the end. So we finally just got together as a unity and decided we we're going to play together. And this is how we ended up in the uh -huh. championship game.
Archer Jaguars lost just one game all season in the APS Championship now, taking on the Young Wolves, who are unbeaten. Everybody was expecting these two teams to make it, and now they are in the APS Championship, and they're both here. Harper Archer's point guard Carter, number four, pulls up and hits the deep three. That's from beyond NBA range right there. He's going to get it back, and almost the same spot goes off glass. Well, Jenna, whenever this kid gets going, whenever Carter gets going, and he's going well, they, they expect him to have a good game. All right, Boo Man down low right here. Realist George working hard in the paint for two. And then Young, nice pass there to McLean down low off the glass. As Harper Archer were going to halftime leading this game. All right, second half now. Anthony Edwards in transition for two. He's going to take it right to the rack right here, number 44. Nice play. I know his name's Anthony Edwards, but we call him Ant-Man. as He is dominant just as on the basketball field, just as he is on the football field. Off the inbounds there, takes it right to the rack, two plus one, and he's pumped. Well, I'll tell you what, I told you, just as football, he's the same way in basketball, and it's no surprise to see him playing this well. McLean there off the offensive rebound gets the put back, and then McLean with the steal, he's going to give it up to Edwards, and he's going to get two more on the other end. Yes, and this right here will seal the game as Young will win the APS championship. Well, it was the first time we really faced uh, this large of a deficit, uh, but they responded. Uh, and did everything that I asked them to. I couldn't be more proud of them. It is nice to see Abdul Malik McLean, the eighth grader, go out with the Gatorade MVP player of the game. Love to see that, but you also love to see the up and coming players. A seventh grader on this team we saw a lot of in the highlights. Number 44, his name is Anthony Edwards. Remember that name. He is our B2C prime performer. With a 42 to 38 win over Harper Archer, the Young Wolves finished the season with an undefeated record and the APS Middle School Championship. It took hard work, dedication. We had to keep pushing because at halftime, we were down one point. Then we got up, we came back, and then we fought and fought more. And then we came back and came out with the W. Anthony Edwards capped off an impressive seventh grade season with 18 points in the title game, but his best performance came earlier in the year. My season. As a seventh grader, it was pretty good because I had I had set a school record for my school with 24 points, and as a seventh grader, everybody was like, "Wow, that guy's good." And Edward says people tell him he resembles a player who is pretty good in his own right. Everyone says that I look like Kevin Durant, <laughs> and I like that he um, he knows how to pull up off the dribble, and I wish one day I could meet him. Maybe one day, number 35 and number 44 will meet. But up next is AAU, where Edwards competes for the Southern Stampede. They train us and we work very hard. We practice on shots, we go through drills. We practice on boxing out, rebounding, um, how to pull up off the dribble. Anthony Edwards' hard work shows when he steps on the court. And for that, he has earned the title of B2C Prime Performer. So some exciting matchups already. Yeah. Let's move now to the GBL championships. Okay. The seventh grade girls game was all about the Lady Longhorns of Lanier. Yeah. So let's talk about the boys game. All right, the boys game. You're looking at Brookwood. They're 13 seed, and they have found a way to make it to the championship, knocking off pretty much some of the better teams in GBL. Okay. Then they're playing Decula. Decula's undefeated. 15-0 right now, running their record up. They had a little trouble against Burkmar in the semifinals, but at the end of the day, they were able to put that game away. Okay, but everybody loves the Cinderella story, so yeah. let's take a look here. Let's stick with the GBL, but let's switch over to the girls this time. The Duluth Lady Wildcats taking on the Lanier Lady Longhorns. Say that three times, Alex. <laughs> For the championship here, the Lady Longhorns number two drives baseline, gets it to her teammate who knocks down the little jumper there. The Duluth Wildcats, they've only lost one game all year long, and that was to Lanier. And one of the reasons why they've been so good is the big presence they have down low. As you see, she knocks down the uh, layup for two. All right, but Lanier has number 21 right here. Takes it up the court, pulls up and knocks down the oh deep, my goodness, I mean, look at that deep three. Yeah, but then look at this again. Duluth knows where their bread and but bread is buttered as they go back down to the person in the post. She knocks down the layup as they are only down by one right now with 30 seconds left. All right, so this one's going to come down to free throws. You know that. Number 21 at the line for Lanier. She knocks down the first one. That's always the tough one. Got to get the first one. Now she steps up for the second. Nothing but net. Cool under pressure and is number 21. And look at the loop. They're trying to make a play. They're desperate. Got to make a play towards the end of the game. Number 23 gets the steal. They give it back to number 21. She dribbles the game out. As you see, she raised her hand in celebration as they win the GBL championship for the seventh grade division. Hey, hey, this is a combination 
of a lot of work from fifth grade. When all the teams were saying that our girls were pitiful, they were pathetic, and they couldn't play basketball, from fifth grade, sixth grade, we were 18 and 0, 18 and 1. This year is a combination of working hard. The GBL 7th grade championship will be decided between Brookwood and Decula. Decula comes in this game undefeated, and one of the main reasons is because of their defense. As you see, they apply so much pressure to you. Getting the turnover here, getting the layup as they are up in this game right now. Then here, one thing that is very underrated about this team is ball movement. You see here, they get ball movement in the post, get the pass to the man up earning goal, and he makes a shot. Then here, look at nice play, going behind the back, giving it to his man, and Decula will end up winning the GBL championship. Guys, hey, I'm extremely proud of you guys. And look, it's the last time you guys will ever play GBL, and I'm proud to be your coach. Way to go, guys. Yeah. 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 Ah. Let's move now to the CCJBC, Cobb County Junior Basketball Conference. Their championship featured the Alpharetta Lady Raiders and the Cherokee Lady Warriors. Number 33 drives for two there for Cherokee. And then the Lady Warriors number 23 drains the three from the wing. These are sixth graders here, Alex. How about this play by a sixth grader? Number 10 goes with the scoop as she adds on to the Cherokee Lady Warriors lead right now as they're up by 10. But the Alpharetta Lady Raiders are going to make a comeback in this one. It's going to be behind number 21. It says, if you're not going to guard me, I'm just going to hit it right there in your face. Then I'm going to grab the rebound. I'm going to take it coast to coast on a 2 on 1. I'm going to keep it, go off the backboard. And then to complete the comeback, number 21 steps behind the three point line and it's from downtown. She knocks down the three pointer and they have completed the comeback right now. Wow, she's got a smooth looking shot. The fans loving that one. She's also going to give up the rock there to number five for the layup. Nice play there from the Alpharetta Lady Raiders. And then you will see here is number five. She was eventually named Gatorade Player of the Game. Goes with the upper under, knocks down the shot, and congratulations to the Lady Raiders as they win the CCJBC Championship. We have uh, learned that the, the game is never over. Play hard, 100 per cent of the, throughout the game, and just keep on battling. Boys and Big time matchup in the CCJBC in the sixth grade division as the Cambridge Bears take on the Wheel of Wildcats. Here you're looking at a couple of players before the game as both of these teams are ready to play for this championship. But it would be Wheeler, number 51, in the paint, dominating. As you see, he gets the layup right there. And then here, number 50 goes up, gets the rebound, puts it back, and Wheeler is in control of this game. Then you see later here on the highlights, number 10 goes coast to coast. As he was, he ended up being named the Gatorade player of the game. Nice shot there. But Cambridge, being the team that they are, would not give up. As even though they were facing the deficit, they fought back. As you see, number one, Sam Himes there, also plays quarterback for the Cambridge Bears, gets the shot. And then here, look at the effort Cambridge is showing as they show. They are letting people know that this is a championship and they are not going out without a fight. Then here, number 30, misses the shot, but he gets the ball back. Knocks down the shot, and Cambridge has closed the gap in this game as they are trying to come back in this championship game. Then here, number three, gets the and one, and Cambridge is very close to pulling off the upset. But it was just too much wheel as number five gets behind the three-point line and strokes the three-pointer. And then, of course, who do they go back? Who do they go back to? Number 51 back in the post, makes a good move, gets the ball, knocks down the layup and the Wheel of Wildcats will win the championship. Proud of my guys for, for uh, being paused and, and taking care of business when they saw a punt go out and went out the game. So they did a great job by stepping up. Okay, Alex, that wraps up this week's edition. Championship games, gotta love it. It's yeah. in the air. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man, it's a great day out here. APS did a great job putting on a good show. Mm -hmm. GBL did a great job putting on a good show. So we just had a great time out here. We had a great time. These ladies are having a great time. Ladies, that's it for us. We're going to let them take it away. Alex, Jenna, ladies, one, two, three. One, two, three, dot, dot.